this week's edition of Mid-South Wrestling Television Network. I'm your host, Boyd Pierce. We have a lot of exciting action coming up. Magnum T.A. takes on Nature Boy, Buddy Landell. Another great battle, Terry Taylor versus Russian Nikolai Volkov. We move into the seventh week of the Mid-South Television Tournament, the Junkyard Dog versus Crusher Khrushchev. A lot of things have been happening. Matchmaker Grizzly Smith tells me that Hacksaw Duggan is in town, but as yet we haven't heard anything from him. But we have exciting news. We have new champions, both a new North American heavyweight champion and new Mid-South Tag Team title holders. Cowboy Bill Watts is now at ringside, so let's go to him right now. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight was to be the seventh week of the Mid-South Wrestling Television Championship Tournament for $10,000. It was to be the Junkyard Dog against Crusher Darso, who is now Crusher Khrushchev. As you can see, the Junkyard Dog has registered a forfeit, and Crusher Khrushchev has advanced in the tournament to the final week, the ninth week. So next week, it'll be Terry Taylor against Hacksaw Butch Reed. The, the reason the Junkyard Dog is not here is largely responsible to the man standing beside me, Mr. Wrestling 2, who is the new North American heavyweight wrestling champion. Monday, March the 12th, downtown New Orleans before a packed crowd, wrestling to wrestle the junkyard dog. And two, I've known you a long time. And I'll tell you, I was there and you shocked me because I think you know the match that the dog would be the most vulnerable in would be a clean scientific bout. And in all the hoopla going on between you and Magnum TA, you kept stressing you'd beat him fair and square. And you said if you beat him, didn't beat him fair and square for the title, you'd unmask and leave Mid-South. Now, Mid-South didn't write any of these stipulations into the contract. This was a verbal situation between you and the junkyard dog. And you went out and you wrestled him fair and square. And I think you know that he's the toughest guy I've ever met and that he's used to big, rough, tough guys trying to cheat him. And he goes ghetto style and he can beat them all. So you stayed real cool and you didn't get his temper flared up because I think you figured he'd take your head off. You lulled him into a false sense of security. You still couldn't beat him. You hit him with two or three knee lifts and couldn't put him down. And then I saw you take something out of your tights, strap it on your knee, and knock him cold. What do you say to that? Hey, uh, Bill, what you saw was I was pulling my trunks up, and as far as anything, I was straightening out my knee. I had a knee pad on it. It was wrinkled down a little bit, and I was pulling my knee up. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's let the people at home be the judge. We have a very short film clip that covers just that one instant in the match when something drastically changed in your appearance. Let's watch that now. Everybody can see right there, Wrestling 2 taking something out of his tights and adjusting it to his leg. And as he moves over, you can see that a new piece of equipment has been added to his leg above the knee pad, above the knee in the thigh area where he connects that tremendous bionic knee lift of his to the jaw of whoever he is trying to beat. I think everybody at home saw just what happened, and the junkyard dog is a man of his word, which I can no longer say for you, and he's said that he was leaving anyway, although you didn't beat him fair and square, so he's gone for 90 days. First of all, Bill, get off my back. The fact of it is is that I was pulling up a knee pad, and I am also the new North American heavyweight champion, whether you like it or not. And that goes for anyone else. Well, I might have given you a little bit of credibility is what you're just saying, except the next night, March the 13th, even though you and T.A. have had a lot of animosity, you did have the Mid-South Tag Titles. And in Lafayette, Louisiana, it was a no disqualification match against the Midnight Express with the titles against the belting. And they had belted you guys before. And you walked out and left Magnum T.A. to take a beating and a whipping all by himself. And let's join the final closing moments of that. There you see Wrestling 2 jumping off the apron, starting to depart the ring to walk out on this important Mid-South Tag Team title match. A one fall, no disqualification match. The title's up against a belting. The losing team must receive five lashes per man. But you see Magnum TA doesn't know it, and still he's come out and he's got Dennis Condry in a standing abdominal stretch, and he's giving up, but Fergie there was distracted trying to get two back in the ring, and that allowed Bobby Eaton to come in with that tennis racket that I'm sure is much more heavy duty than anything you'd find at a sporting goods store. And he hit T.A. in the head. They won the match, won the titles. And now Magnum T.A. has got to take the whipping that he and two would have had to take by losing them, not one time for five lashes, but twice for ten lashes. 
you see Dennis Condry as T.A. is holding his head from that brutal blow with a tennis racket in this no, that no disqualification match. You see the new champions, the new Mid-South Tag Champions applying those belts. And you can just imagine how anguishing that would be. And you see the little monkey running around in a red suit. The man that has no place in a ring or association with real athletes or real men. That mama's boy, that sissy. And he's going to administer the last, the, the fifth lash on Magnum T.A. You know, if he was ever invited to a reunion of athletes, he should come in singing Stranger in Paradise. There, you, the only man I've ever seen in a wrestling ring where his stomach is bigger than his shoulders. I just can't stand. This would be like putting salt in an open wound to have to stand there for the humiliation of this sorry excuse for a man, this sissy, that's been running his mouth and using his mama's money to buy what he wants. And there, Magnum T.A. takes it. Now you see the greatest thing I've seen since I've been associated with wrestling. Magnum T.A. is bending over, was bending over there to take the five additional lashes. Now we've edited this, but Terry Taylor walked out and said, if two was that treacherous to walk out on you after the beating you just took, I'm not going to let you take ten. I'll take five for you. And greater love has no man than to sacrifice for his friend. And you see just how bad that first shot that Terry Taylor took. And like I say, we've edited this down, but Terry Taylor will stand in the hearts and minds of everybody and certainly in Magnum T.A as a sacrifice, and you can just see how bad they're, they're lacerating his back with that belt. And of course, they're taunting and let, letting, the, they won't get it over with. They drag it out. And listen, look at the, the, the pick squeak there in the red coat, hollering taunts and making fun of him. And yet this man has never been in a physical contest in his life where he had to pay the price and feel the pain and the hurt and get out and sacrifice and be in shape. He is, he's like body lice. He's, he, he's a scavenger. He's hanging on and taking his off of those that do. You know, it, it's like being a freeloader or, or a person that, that, that doesn't work for a living, you know, that just accepts the handouts and the, and, and the freebies. That's Jim Cornette, and yet he is coming in to gloat and, and to partake of the Mid-South Championship and also to dish out a lash to each of these tremendous young athletes that have paid the price, that are champions in their own right and certainly have the heart of champions. And right here you see, I, I just don't think that, I don't think there's any way if I had a breath left in my body and was conscious and coherent that I could stand there and let that sissy lay that belt on I me. Mean, not that he could hurt me, that sissy couldn't hurt anybody. But the fact that I'd have to take that from him, it just would be more, I, I, I take my hat off to Terry Taylor. You know, I'll tell you something, Bill, what you just saw, yes, I walked off because you know, I could no longer coach this man. He was, he's already got the big head. He feels that he knows it all. And when a guy gets like that, then you got to get away from him. And that's exactly what I did. I'll be doggone if I was going to stand there and get a whipping by him beating and losing the belts too. No way. I have been in that situation once before. He lost a match and I got a whipping for it. Well, that wasn't going to happen again. And I saw to it it didn't. Well, I'm saying... Congratulations, I guess, in order. You are now the North American Heavyweight Champion. That's exactly but Russell, right. until you look at all these people that backed you for so many years and believed in you and stood behind you, and I was one of them, and you've lost a great deal of that following. I haven't lost anything. I've got the North American Heavyweight title. <laughs> there you heard it. We'll be back after these messages from Mid-South Wrestling.